I would like to narrate a very fascinating startup story which has a major impact, which will have a major impact on India. It's a very short story and the rest of the world. IIT Kanpur, around a year ago, decided to build one of the most complex machines ever built by man. And they finally decided to build an artificial heart. Now, why artificial heart? Because artificial heart can help to save millions of lives and you may not know it costs about a crore rupees. And we have, we were implanting last 12 years, people led a very normal life with the artificial heart. And uh, there is only one company in the world making it. And there are one or two other companies which are irrelevant. But what's fascinating is the way they went about building it. IIT Kanpur was very clear from the very beginning that their faculty can't build it, but they have the knowledge and wisdom to be mentoring other startup entrepreneurs to build it. First thing they did was to identify from the alumni circle who are the people who actually built this artificial heart in US or Europe. And they chose them to mentor this product. Second thing they did was to tie up with all the largest heart hospitals of India to partner with IIT Kanpur to uh, guide them, mentor them, and evaluate the product when it is ready and eventually buy it when it is required. So they seal the deal with the buyers. So when the product is ready, they don't need to have a marketing team because every leading heart hospital of the country thinks it is my heart I have developed with them. No startup in the world can do this. Any startup, irrespective of their deep pocket, if they come to us to sign an agreement to use a product before it is developed, there is no way a hospital will do that. Why we did it? It's because it's a IIT Kanpur incubated company. And that is the power they have as an institution of national eminence. Then next thing IIT did was to search across the country for nine brightest engineers who had some domain knowledge in different aspect of the artificial heart. And these are extremely smart, brightest people. And they all came together to build this. Again, no startup with irrespective of how much money they have, they can get these kind of smartest people to drive one project and working together. How did IIT Kanpur do it? Because they gave everything what a smart entrepreneur wants. IIT Kanpur funded the entire project. And they gave the IP right to these young nine startups who are building it, of course, along with the small rights for IIT Kanpur. And they even gave the first right of refusal when the product is ready, they can, these kids can build their own company and they will hold their hand to build it and own it. Essentially, they created a phenomenal stage for nine young entrepreneurs to build what will perhaps be the most advanced artificial heart in the world. And I know they will do it within three years. And this is the power of what an institution like IIT Kanpur can do. Now you must be wondering why I am narrating this story in this context. If you ask me five years ago, what is the top national priority for a country like India? I would have said it is a healthcare and healthcare, nothing but healthcare. Today my answer is different. 
For me, the top priority for India is national defense and security. This is top priority. We are exactly like Israel, surrounded by not so friendly countries. And we need to do today what Israel has done. If any one of you have not read a book called Startup Nation, written by a friend of mine, Saul Singer, please read that book. That will give you everything what we need to do when we face a situation like this. India is blessed with the 24 IITs, five institutions like Indian Institute of Sciences. Our government should identify the product required for the warfare. The drones, missiles, hypersonic jets, and the radar, and everything what is required. And these IITs and, uh, and all these Indian Institute of Sciences should be asked to build this product as a startup, exactly like what IIT Kanpur has done. Because future war will not be fought without the technology. It, the backbone of the war and the outcome is going to be technology. We spend billions of dollars in, a, in importing drones and all the war machines. They're all driven by most advanced uh, sensors and the, uh, uh, the printed circuit boards and all the software. But remember, other than us, somebody else also has the on-off button control. And that happens to the manufacturer. And that is the greatest weakness. Every equipment required for the war has to be built by our own country. Before the Silicon Valley, what it became, everything happened with one startup called PayPal in, in Silicon Valley, promoted by uh, Elon Musk, you all know, and Peter Thiel, along with a handful of their friends. Eventually, every big startup which changed the world happened because of the PayPal Mafia. This happened with one startup. Imagine if all the 24 <coughs> IITs and Indian Institute of Science, a great institution of the country, becomes a startup uh, institution and we become a startup world. This country in five to seven years can be completely transformed. Every very, very interesting about defense research and defense production, production is that every product from the history onwards developed for the defense is rarely used for the defense. The product what was developed, today every household item we find, every household, uh, every item we look at and use it in our day-to-day -day life has some component which was developed for the defense. Look at my profession, the CT scan, MRIs, ultrasound, lasers, which saves millions of lives, were developed by the defense, by the funding from the United States DARPA. And this is the impact defense research, research will have on the future of our country. We live in an amazing country. Our younger generation, all of you, you can do amazing things. I'll give you one example. Today, I work in a hospital where we use the EM electronic medical record, which is far ahead of any of the electronic medical records made anywhere in the world. My friends and colleagues from US and Europe, when they look at the EMR, they get shocked and surprised and mesmerized. Sitting in my dining room, I can look at every patient in my ICU. I can interact with the patient. I can interact with the nurses. I can change the medications. I can give instructions. I can even see the color of the urine what the patient is passing. And all this was created by <clears throat> just 100 software engineers. Good number of them are barely coming out of the engineering school, guided by some domain experts and by passionate doctors. And it was done at a price which is a tiny, tiny fraction of what US and Europe will pay in just a matter of five years. 
So I have no doubt that our younger generation will make Prime Minister's dream of Atmanirbhar Bharat a reality if only we give them a platform to make it. This is the possibility and I would like to congratulate, I just want to reiterate Dr. Jayashankar that Indians are truly privileged to have you as our Minister of External Affairs. Thank you so much.